Hi there, I'm Kat. Let's knit together. Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of Let's Knit Together. In this episode, socks. Knitting socks is so much fun. You can make socks in many, many different ways. You can use any weight yarn. You could use Worsted weight, you could use sport weight, you could use fingering weight, even lace weight yarn. You can use a hand painted yarn, a solid color, a tweed yarn, or self striping yarn. These self striping yarns are a lot of fun. You never know what you're going to end up with as you're knitting it along, and that's what's so fun. Although I don't recommend using a very textured pattern when you're using the self-striping yarns because the pattern tends to get lost in the stripes so that you can't actually see the texture itself. I would instead use a more smoother type of stitch like a stock net or a ribbing stitch or a seed stitch or some other smoother type of, of texture for your stitches. Now along with the many types of yarns that you can use, you can do many different techniques. Here. I'm using five double pointed needles. This is a more traditional way to knit socks. These needles are great. Unfortunately, they tend to slip out of the stitches and you can lose one side of your sock pretty easily that way. The bamboo and, and the wood needles are less slippery. Uh, although the problem with these is they, they do tend to break very easily. The other, method with, the other methods that I choose to use are with circular needles. There's a couple of techniques you can use. You can knit one sock or even two on a single circular needle, a fairly long one as you can see. I tend to use something that's 32 inches or longer. And what you would do is cast on half the stitches on, on one side of the needle and half the stitches on the other. When you're ready to knit the next side, you just pull one end through and knit with the, knit with the, uh, the other end until you get to the end of that side then pull the needle or pull the loop back through until the needle is positioned right back at the end again. Turn it around and do the other side. Now this is great because you only have two points that you actually have plus the fact that you only end up with two joins, this side and this side, instead of four like you would on the double pointed needles. And you see that you have less opening, so there's no holes at the joins here in this particular approach. The other technique, which is one of my favorites, is to use two circular needles by using two or knitting two socks on two circular needles. Now the benefit of doing this technique is that first of all, you don't end up with the lone sock syndrome when as you're knitting one at, one sock at a time and then find that when you get to the end you're bored with the first sock and you never do the second one, which is what I've done before. Also, you end up with the same gauge on your socks when you knit them both at the same time. So if one week you're stressed out and the sock's too tight, and the next week you're calm and the sock is too loose. So this way you keep your gauge consistent by knitting them both at the same time. Some folks I know actually knit their sleeves this way too to make sure that their sleeves both match. Anyway, what I'm going to do is actually demonstrate how to do how to cast on for two socks on two circular needles. I'm going to use two different colored needles. I'm going to use a uh, a knit picks needle, which is if as you can see the cord is uh, pink, and an Addy Turbo needle, as you can see the cord is tan or brown. I'm also going to, going to use two different color sock yarns so that you can tell which sock I'm working on. I'm going to use a red, red yarn and put it on this side and I'm going to use a blue yarn and I'm going to put it on this side. The reason I suggest trying to keep track of which ones are on which side is that they can tend to get twisted together and when they're the same yarn it's actually a little bit confusing. So you'll cast on 60 stitches, all on one needle first. It started with one, two, three, four, 
59 and 60. Now once you have all of the stitches on one needle, what you want to do is then transfer half of the stitches to your second needle by just moving them across like so. And move so move half of them, which is 30 stitches, to the second needle. So we'll go one, two, twenty-nine, thirty. Okay, so now I have half my stitches on one needle and half on the other. Now here's the trick. You'll take the two needles together, holding the tips, and pull your stitches to the opposite end of the needle like that. So that you end up seeing the start of your stitches on one needle and the end of your stitches on the other. Now what you're going to do is actually cast on for your second sock on the same needle you cast on for your first sock, which is the pink one. So we're going to use the blue yarn now and cast on 60 stitches or the number of stitches required for your sock onto the first needle. So I have my slip knot here. Find the other end of the needle, the pink needle, and cast on 60 stitches. So that's one, two, three, fifty-nine, and sixty. So now I have sixty stitches cast on to the first needle that I cast it on with the first sock. Now I've gotten my yarns a little bit twisted here. It's always good to keep them on two, two different sides so you don't lose track. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to transfer half the number of stitches from this needle to the other needle, the same way we did for the first sock. One, two, three, four, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, and thirty. Okay, so now I've transferred the other sock, half the, need half the stitches on the second needle. Now I'm going to bring these two together like I did before, hold the ends, and carefully pull the stitches of the second sock down just to the middle of the cord to keep them snugly, snugly there. Now, if you want to learn how to actually knit the sock and, the, and how to do the heel and so forth, I encourage you to check out the show notes where there will be a link to the Sock Knitters uh, Cyber Sock class on how to knit two socks on two circular needles. But keep in mind, what you'll want to do is You'll always want to be working with the ends of the same needle at the same time. As you can see here, I've dropped the brown needle and I'm using the pink needle. So when I'm ready to knit the first sock, I just bring the other end around, pick up the red yarn, knit to the end of that side. Then when I get to uh, the end of that sock, pull the second sock around, still knitting with the same ends, pick up the blue yarn, drop the red yarn, and knit with that sock. Then when you get to the end of this side, you'll actually turn it around and switch to the other needle. So you'll start now with the brown needle, still knitting with the blue yarn because you're still on the blue sock. Then once you get to the end of that blue sock, you'll pick back up the red, drop the blue, and then pick up the red again, and then you'll be going around and around on both socks at the same time. So that's how you cast on for two, two socks on two circular needles. Welcome to my library. When I'm not knitting, I'm reading about knitting. And this is one of my favorite knitting books. Now it's not a sock book necessarily, but it does have some great handy reference materials. Now the book is Handy Book of Patterns by Ann Budd. Now, why do I think this is a great reference? There are great tables where you can actually refer to the gauge that, uh, that you might be using to knit the sock with as well as the uh, size of the foot that you're actually knitting to. 
So you can basically use the same pattern for any size foot or any size yarn that you may use. Now, uh, we'll have uh, links to the book on the show notes, so please check it out. That's our book review for today. Well, I don't like to sew. In fact, I will knit a sweater from the top down and in the round just to avoid sewing seams. And when I knit socks from the cuff to the toe, I'll actually use a three needle bind off instead of a Kitchener stitch because I hate to sew. So when it came time that I was going to knit a pair of socks for myself, I spent a long time looking for just the right color, the right pattern, and the right texture. Just perfect for me. They came out pretty good, don't you think? Well, one of the practicalities of knitting socks is that they can wear out and they can get holes in them, like this one. See? But I hate to sew. So what should I do? Should I darn them? Should I throw them away? Which I would do if they were store-bought socks, right? Or should I rip them out and make a new pair? What would you do? Leave a comment on the site with your feedback. Well, that's it for our first show. What'd you think? Go to letsknittogether.com and leave a comment. We'd also like your feedback on future episodes. Some topics we're planning are lace knitting, beaded knitting, felted knitting, stash, knitting with wire, coats, knitting with ribbon, big needle knits, and maybe even a field trip or two. You can also subscribe to future episodes and have each weekly show delivered to your computer automatically. There are three feeds, a low-res version optimized for iPods, a high-res version for watching on your computer, and a Windows Media version for your PDA. Follow the instructions if you need help. Bye! See you next time!